Hey there YouTube, AJ here. Did you know that there is a pair of V8 motor mounts hiding in every model A-frame? Okay, future AJ here YouTube. I know I said I was gonna be making front motor mounts, but that's gonna to have to come later. Um, I need to get my back end situated first, which I have already done in, at this point. So, this video is turning into a video of making my transmission mount, not my motor mounts. So bear with me, we'll get to the front motor mounts and um, do those in the next video. Okay, so I learned a lot there. Wow, number one, uh, the frame does not roll backwards very well without a tie rod. That was miserable. Um, number two, I need to learn to do basic math better because I should have had my hoist on the half ton setting. I had it on the three quarter ton, thinking this was 750 pounds, which is three quarter of a thousand. And I totally forgot, or totally just spaced and, you know, a ton is 2,000 pounds, so a thousand, I could have put this on a half ton and still been good. Uh, that way I had more distance. Uh, I don't know if you could see it in the time lapse, but I let the engine down really hard and it caught on the cross member on the pulley. I hope I didn't damage anything. We'll see. So looking at this, our engine mount is further back than I anticipated. Uh, everything that I've read, people said the engine mount would be about six, six and a half inches back from the radiator mount hole, which it is closer to nine inches back here. So I don't know what the deal is there. I'm going to need to trim this off through here. Uh, I think I'll start just by cutting down through here and see how that goes. Uh, if I have to, I'll trim more. I don't I want to try to leave as much as I can for strength. At the back end right now, my transmission mount I think is pretty close to where I need it. It's kind of hard to tell with the motor tilted. So if we take there's a little recess in here to where this fits in. Anyway, it's really close is all I can say. Um, when I see, I'm gonna put this back flush, obviously I'll have to trim away this. I will cut, I'll take this and cut this off square neat and make it symmetrical on both sides. And cut this one there and uh, we'll see what we can do that to make this drop in first thing we got to do is get this down onto the ground all right so yesterday I basically all I really got accomplished was getting this motor in here and then uh, a lot of thinking on how am I gonna do this I know at the beginning of the video I said I was going to be working on my front motor mounts, but that's changing because the 8BA motor is a little longer, I guess, than the 59, and it's going to be pretty tight in here, and I need to get the spacing back as far as I can, and I don't know what that's going to do with my firewall, so I might have to do something there. I think in the short term, I might have to rework all this, but I think what I'm going to do is start on my rear mount for my transmission. And then after I get that done, come and work my front motor mounts, get it all together. And I might have to rework all of that. But if my front motor mounts are as far back as I can get them, 
and if I have to move everything forward later, at least I can still cut those down and make them fit nice and tight because the frame tapers towards the front. It gets more narrow towards the front. And the rear transmission mount, for right now I'm just gonna make it bolt in and I might do that for the front too, I don't know. We'll just, I won't weld anything solid until after I determine if the motor is gonna be where I want it in relationship to my cow later on. So, but for now, so we can get moving, I did get the motor on the floor all cribbed up here to where I can move the frame back and forth around it. It's pretty much centered. It's more centered in the front, not quite on the tail. Eh, well, I'm not worried about that right now. But I've got it to where I can work with it. One thing I wish I had done was I wish I had gone ahead and clearance my uh, front cross member because I kind of knew I was going to have to do it. And yeah, I did. It, it made a pain. You can see I removed the fan. That was a surprise to me. I did not know these fans had an oiling system in them. So when I took the fan blade off, oil started pouring out everywhere. Uh, so that was a new thing for me. I didn't know that. And one of my spacers that goes in, in between here that holds the oil is broke. So I don't know if I can replace that or not. So who knows what I got going on that want that thing. We'll get to that later. I did take off the uh, generator too, just to give myself some more room. I'm not using the Ford generator. Uh, I'm not using, eventually I'll be changing this to a dual intake manifold. Uh, and, and I'm gonna be using my 59 Sprite generator with mechanical tack drive to drive my mechanical tack. All that's to come. All that's a long way of saying this video is now becoming just making my rear transmission mount. Then we'll do a separate video on the front motor mounts. And so we're going to start that by trim off a minimum amount of this flange here on the back, on the cross member in the middle, so we can start fitting this. And then we're going to trim away this front cross member as well, so we can get as much room to work with up here. I'm just going to rough cut that for now because it's going to be hard with all the motor in the way to get a nice smooth arc the way I'm going to want it so I'll have to fix that later once I take the motor out so but it'll be fine for now and then the other thing I'm going to do is my 46 truck transmission mount that I'm going to use or that I'm going to try to use I'm going to go ahead and square this flame cut off here and then I'm going to make a matching cut on this side so it's so I can this is kind of in the way of working with it but that's how we're going to start Okay, well, that was about as much fun as you can imagine, having hot metal rain down on you. So I should have listened to my gut and clearance this from the beginning. But anyway, we've got that clearance. We can now roll back further. We have room there. We have cut the flange off of our cross member there to give us where we're going to mount our drop bracket for the transmission. Like I said, I just rough cut this out. It's still way too big. It's going to get smaller. Well, this is going to get smaller. This opening here will probably get bigger. So that's where we're at right now. Our next step is to figure out how we want to make our drop bracket down to hold this piece and start cutting at the size. Throw our trans mount back into this bracket and we roughly line this up at 13. I know you can't see it but I marked my center line on my, my um, cross member here and then I measured out 5 inches, 6 inches, 7 inches just to give me a scale to work with on my, on my cross member. So if I roughly hold this in at the 13 inch mark, or the six and a half on the cross member itself. Okay. Everything looks like it's pretty well lined up. 
and my height is where I want it. So I think we're good. Okay, so one other thing I did while I was out there, I don't know if you can tell it or not, but from here to here is um, 13 inches. From here to here is a half inch less on each side, so that should be 12 inches. And I did that so my, my bracket I'll make will have just a slight angle to it. And then once I make it, I think I'm probably even going to um, round it as well to try to make it look a little better under here. I think I'll try to come down to about this point here and then just curve it in. Uh, but I'll do that after I get the first part of it made here. So we're good here. Our next thing we need to do is to make our drops that are gonna hold this in the correct position, which would basically be, well, I guess I could cut this gap a little better. Anyway, basically it's gonna be in that position there. Uh, so that's, I guess, the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this gap a little wider, and then I need to make my drop brackets for this. So to get my drop brackets, though, I need to figure out roughly how long of steel I need. Nine inches on that side, roughly. Should be the same over here, but I just want to measure it in two places just to make sure I got it about right. All right, this should show more like nine and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut my two pieces of steel at nine and a half, and then we'll start working with it from there. Okay, so here's what I'm working with on my design. The idea is I will weld this to these. The, this will be the top of the, the Model A cross member. So this side here, obviously I will have to cut down. I will have to cut all this inside flange off in order for this to sit flush against it. My thought is then it, after it's all set, I'll make another piece to go across here that will strengthen not only this bracket, but the Model A cross member as well, since I have to cut out part of it for the drive shaft to go through. Next thing I gotta do is cut off this flange. I'm just gonna go ahead and go do that off camera and then come back to you here. So we've got this all put together. This will be obviously welded together, cut square flat across the top here, cross piece put in for the top with a arch out at the bottom. It should make everything all tied all together be nice and strong. Now, there is an issue. Because of the thickness of the transmission mount itself, if I would weld this straight to these drop brackets, it will not slide in there. It has like a, a recess back here. And the gap, even though there is a, quite a bit of a gap already in this recess, it still needs more space between the bracket surface and this cross member surface. So what I need to do, cut spacers to weld in as well. And this is just roughly just to show you. Okay, so if we put spacers in there, then it'll slide in. gotta work okay let's see how we did we have our bracket we have our spacer this goes in here if everything lines up correctly the bracket all fits that slides in nicely so I think we're ready to start tacking some stuff together. 
I'm going to start by welding this piece to the spacer bracket in the middle because there's a hole here in this piece that I'm going to put a little rosette weld in there to hold it to the spacer bracket. Then I will then I will weld the spacer bracket to this. And once I have that welded together, I will weld this and the spacer bracket to these. Okay, so we got this tacked together now. Clamped into place here. I need to cut it, this little angle off here on both sides so it'll be flat on the top. And I think I'm going to make a piece to go across here and fill in this gap and weld to the top of it. I'm not happy with the looks of it down here, but for now, as long as it gets the engine in the right place, I'm fine. I can always come back and like cut this here and bring a U piece around to make it look prettier and not so ugly down there. Uh, and then also increase my um, ground clearance. For now it's fine. So now what I gotta go ahead and do is cut this, make this piece, and just weld it all together. And then hopefully we can get the tail end of this up onto the mount. Alright, so we got our brace in here cut, fitted, tacked into place, got it all clamped in. Uh, everything seems to be in place the way I was envisioning. At this point, um, I know it's ugly. Yeah, it's ugly. It's big and clunky and ugly. Well, maybe later we can get this to look a little better. Um, at this point, I'm not going to worry about that. I might if nothing else like kind of round off these tabs to make that look a little better in here before I'm all done but for now this is going to be what it is at least to let me get the motor put in and get my front motor mounts figured out and then we'll go from there I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and finish welding this together and I'm not going to make you watch that because it's going to take me a long time I am a not a good welder yet uh, it's not that I can't make good welds, it's just I'm inconsistent and so I have to spend a lot of time grinding and redoing. So I gotta get more consistent with my welds. I'll, I'll, I'll draw a really nice bead and be real pleased with myself and then the next one's shit, so. Anyway, we'll get back to welding this thing and uh, we'll catch you when it's all done welded up. Okay, so after a lot of welding and a lot of grinding, I've got this thing pretty much welded up. Uh, we're going to go ahead with it as planned at this point. I've got it clamped into place on my center line. I'm going to go ahead and draw a pilot hole in this one hole. So the piece of steel that I used for this top part had a hole in it, so I strategically put, placed that hole in the center so I'd be able to use it as a guide. And now we're going to drill a pilot hole in that. Someday I'm going to get some more 3H drills. Okay, so we got our hole in the center, we got our hole here to match it up. Now I need to, on the back side I marked the openings here so I wouldn't drill into them. Or maybe I do want to use that one. Hmm, maybe I should put one, two, three. No, uh, one, two, three, four, five. 
I think I'll just do that. I think I'll drill one here, here, matching on this side, and then... Okay, well, here we are. It is in, mounted. And I gotta say, it's quite sturdy. It feels good. Aside from my not beautiful welds, um, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, in the future, if I decide to keep this, I will probably put it on a diet and take off quite a bit at the bottom here to raise my scrub line. But we won't have to worry about that until I blow the car apart and go to do all the final welding on the frame and everything. So, that's good. You might be thinking now, well get to it. Lift the motor up, put the transmission into the mount, and get marking out the fronts. Yes, but no. i got one more thing I need to do. So, remember this piece here? This is the flange that went from this side to this side. Well, that actually added a lot of strength to the cross member and we removed a lot of that strength and there's one on the back side as well and that one's probably going to have to get cut out for, to, for clearancing for the drive shaft as well i don't know yet for a fact but i think we're going to have to so taking all that strength out of the middle yeah this adds some of it back especially this top plate i put in here but taking all that strength out of the middle I still want to add some more strength back into it. So what I'm going to do is put boxing plates here and here. And I've already actually got them laid out here. And fortunately, they were already just about the perfect size. Just a smidge oversized, but I'm not going to worry about that. And uh, if I decide that's a problem, I can grind it off later. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. So what I need to do is drill four holes in here. Four holes in that one and then the matching holes in the cross member itself and bolt these in before I want to put any weight on here so I'm going to do that now Well now, we've got our boxing plates bolted in. Not the final hardware because I didn't have hardened nuts, but uh, so we'll have to fix that later. I fix a lot of things later if you haven't noticed. Uh, we've got the real bolts to bolt the transmission to the um, motor mount, but I don't have nuts for those. I've got them here to just drop in place as holders. I've already bolted the motor mount loosely to the um, mount in the frame. I kind of think it's going to be the best way to line this up and then just drop these into pin it and then I can replace it with, I got a couple other bolts here that I can bolt it together to where it'll hold the back end together. I got two options of bolts here, hopefully one of them will work. And But these are just to drop in real quick and pin it in place and then I can do that. So, next thing now is to watch me struggle lifting this engine and trying to get it lined up back here. Well, there you have it. I have an engine in a frame, kind of, sort of. Right now I just got these little wedges for my front motor mounts. No, nah, that's not the only thing holding it in there. That's just keeping it centered. I've got um, jack stands under the front, and then I also have my floor jack under the engine down there, all to, as a backup. Uh, 
surprisingly, getting the transmission mounted into the motor plate was not all that difficult. It was actually surprisingly easy knock on wood and gratifying, you know, all that work that it went in that easy. Uh, you can see my rear radius rods underneath it here. Uh, that's good because we still have to make a mount for the front of these. And I'm thinking I'm just going to be able to tie it all into my cross member plate, etc. Where they'll be back, they'll be back underneath this center point, kind of back in this area. So eventually, that's where I think those are all going to go. So that's all looking pretty good at this point in terms of how this is working out. So I'm kind of pleased with myself. So it's in there. It's secure. It's not going anyplace. It worked very well. Now we got to get the front motor mounts in so we can uh, have the engine in here by itself. So that's next on the list is to make my motor mounts to hold the front of it. I've got my forward to back position and it looks really good. You can see my front pulley clearance here. Uh, fan clearance is going to be an issue. I definitely could use some space here. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Everything is as far back as it possibly can be right now. I don't see any way to get it any further back. So we're going to have to deal with that. Because that's going to stick out kind of like right to there. So I don't know if I can mount my radiator like to the forward and hang kind of hanging over the front of this. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to have to deal with what I got. I don't want to try it. I don't really want to push it back any further because I'm already worried about firewall clearance. I might have to, you know, dish in my firewall some for clearance. We'll see when we get there. But for right now, uh, yeah, it's going to be as good as it's going to get up here. We'll just have to figure it out as we go. We're going to be forging ahead, making our motor mounts to go in here. But you know what? That's going to have to be in the next video. Thank you for watching, especially if you watched the entire video. Love that. If you haven't, consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. Subscribing isn't a pay thing. It's just uh, makes my videos come up in your feed so you won't miss them. So hope that hopefully you can do that. Help me out. Click the like button if you want. I don't know. Or share the video on uh, social media platforms. Get me some more exposure. Anything it will help out, and I appreciate it. So until the next video when I make these front motor mounts, Later, YouTube.